Hey, if you're here, it's because you want to learn how to make friends, but you're probably unsure if I'm the guy who can teach you that. So I'll give a bit of my backstory first and show how I went from being really, really bad at making good friends to being really good at making friends and making them really quickly. And then I'll give you the tips and tricks and show you the pitfalls to avoid. Many people make the same mistakes again and again and again when it comes to making friends. I'll show you how to avoid those and you'll live a long and happy life because of this video. Social connection is legitimately one of the best predictors of long-term health and happiness. So this isn't something to be scoffed at. It's maybe the most important thing. We're social creatures. Okay, so my story. I used to think I was really good at making friends. I was quite outgoing, extroverted. I'd suggest meeting up for different reasons and um, had quite a big social circle. And then a few years ago, I was homeless. And I called on this big social circle and I said, hey, I'm in need of help. I'm not doing so well. And it was like, for the most part, crickets. And so I realized that instead of a lot of good friends, I actually just had a lot of fair weather friends. And I had to completely rethink what a friend was, like what are the characteristics of a friend and at what point do I go from labeling someone an acquaintance to labeling them a friend? And what sort of values did I want those people to have? But because I was homeless, I had to sh sort all that shit out first. So I had to find a way to get a job and then get back on my feet. And I continued to focus on income and just running away from being homeless for quite a few years. And then I got to a point where my career was doing pretty well. I mean, considering where I was, it was doing like exceptionally well. And not saying this to boast, just that it allowed me some breathing space to start considering how I was gonna go about making friends. And Another reason why I had a lot of fair weather friends rather than legitimate friends was I was obsessed with dating and women. So a lot of the friends I had, friends, were just like wingmen. The only thing that bound us together was a desire for women. Yeah, I mean, that's fine and everything, but you tend to associate with the wrong types and, you know, you're you're there purely to pick up and there's no like discernment of character there's no alignment of values but i took the lessons i'd learned from lots and lots of dating and i started to apply them to making friends and interestingly when people talk about being methodical with dating it can sound like manipulative and like you're a psychopath and all of that stuff but when you talk about it in the the framework or setting of a friendship and making friends, most people I, I talk to about it in, in that regard seem to think it, it's great, you know, which is an interesting point, but an aside. And so then I started becoming methodical about how I was going to make friends. And I decided to, as I do in my day-to-day -day work, I'm a growth marketer, uh, I started to A-B test different uh, platforms, different avenues for making friends. So online, offline, Bumble, uh, Meetup, the gym, uh, running club, you know, all sorts of different things. And then when I found ones that worked better than others, I just doubled down on this. And one of the ones I found that was very effective or efficient, given how little time you have to put into it was Bumble Friends. When I first went on, um, I had the problem of lots of gay guys, you know, there's this like subset of gay men who really enjoy the chase 
uh, and, and trying to convert straight men to gay men. I mean, I'm on the edge anyway, so it probably they probably think, man, just one little push and he'll be he'll be on our team. Um, but that's not the case. I'm, I'm I'm on the edge, but I'm staying firm on the edge. So I had to first uh, make sure that it was very clear that straight or gay, I didn't mind what you were, and we could be friends. But I was I was there f- purely for platonic reasons. So. First, I had to start being very blatant that I was in a relationship with a woman. So I think like four out of six pictures, I switched to uh, pictures of me and my girlfriend. And that immediately removed all of that fluff. That was the first step. And then the next step was trying to figure out what I wanted in a friend like what would my ideal friend look like and this is something i'd done when i started dating after my last relationship i realized i'd been getting into long-term relationships with the wrong people a lot of them i'm still friends with so it's not that they're bad people they're actually amazing people but they were the wrong people for a long-term relationship we we just shouldn't have been in long-term relationships So I wanted to get more specific with the sort of partner that I would find. What were the the good things I wanted in that person? What were the values? And what were the bad things that I was willing to accept? You know, like maybe they're a bit messy or they're a bit scatterbrained or, you know, I'm just throwing out random examples, but, you know, humans are fallible and therefore there's no way that you can find one without flaws so if you try and do that you're on a fool's errand so instead you want to set yourself up for success by saying here are the things i want and here are the things that aren't great but that if they stayed there forever i'd be okay i could take them and they're not good things but i'm okay with them that worked really well for me that really really worked well for me and whereas before i'd gone on dates and you know gone on two dates, five dates, 10 dates, sometimes even entered into relationships with the wrong people and bent bent on my my bound boundaries or like what I wanted. Now, because I had this framework and I knew that it was completely tied up with what I wanted for my life, uh, I no longer did that. So if it wasn't working on the first date, it wasn't working. If there were red flags, maybe I would like chat about them a bit and and make sure that the red flag was a legitimate red flag and not some like misfiring of my psyche. Uh, And then I'd be out there as soon as I could. So I was saving a lot of time and so were they. So I started to apply this in the friend sphere. So I thought of the, the, the sort of things that made for fair weather friends. And I tried to swipe left on those things. And I tried to bake into my profile uh, things that would make people who didn't have the characteristics I wanted, make them swipe left on me. So I wanted to proactively get rid of the kinds of people that were of no interest to me and that the relationship, the friendship would always be a fair weather one if there was a friendship there at all. And so one of the things I found was that you don't want to make friends purely based off of a hobby. I mean, it's nice, like you need to connect on uh, interests, right? However, it can't be the only thing, you know, because one person can like board games and donate and help grannies across the street. And another person could like board games and stab people you know so it has to go beyond that and you have to look for values and so i put into my profile all of the things i valued so i'm just going to share screen and go to my profile so here's my profile it's changed a bit over time but uh you know here it is if i was to 
to uh, give feedback, I'd say, you know, I'm not smiling here. Maybe I look a bit serious. Am I going to attract the wrong kind of person? Potentially. I don't really take that many photos, so I didn't have much to work with. But if you have a lot of photos, choose ones where you look interesting, engaged, happy, uh, together, like you have a life. Uh, and potentially, if you have specific interests, have pictures of you doing those things. That's all good stuff. One thing that I have found when I was dating that stayed true when I went to making friends on like online dating and online friend making is people don't fill in their bios or if they do, they'll say looking for a few lads to go drinking with. But what kind of lads, you know, how many shit uh, friend dates are you going to have to go on? because you weren't specific enough. Um, and that's fine. You know, some people are at that phase in their life where they just want to make a shit ton of friends. And if you want that, you want that. But all the studies say, like, all you need is a close network. Uh, a small number of people is all you really need, as long as they're, they're like, shit weather friends. Uh, you know, they've got your back. And so that's what I'm looking for. And, you know... I know someone who works for the NHS and works with old people um, in the community who have had their mental health degrade because their last friend has died or their partner has died. So I've seen the damaging effects that not having a social network can have. Like these people, they might be like lecturers or like, you know, really smart people and then they lose their last friend and then it's like maybe we need to send them to a to an institute uh, maybe we need to put them on drugs um so just to look into the future it's so important to have these social networks and and have really strong ones thriving ones ones that continue to grow over time and shift as your needs and values shift um and that's one thing looking at these old people uh, reinforced for me and the other bit is a lot of these people uh, they have you know a hip replacement and then their friend dies or something like that and then because they don't have a social circle their uh, financial health plummets as well and, and they end up maybe almost being on the streets and that kind of thing at the ripe age of 90 so um, not only do do, does a social circle help you mentally it also helps you financially and in the ups and downs of life your friends can catch you on the downs and you can catch them on the downs and so together you grow so that's kind of my framework I'm not looking for like someone to go to the pub with that that who gives a fuck I'm looking for someone and from the start I'm filtering for this I'm like if shit hits the fan, is this person going to be there to back me up? And if not, you know, nice meeting you, but goodbye. Like, because you only have so many time. You only have so many time. I, I have so little time. I can't even use grammar. You have so little time on this planet. Why spend it with, uh, with people with, with like transitory relationships? relationships that will last six months or a year make fucking good friends that's the goal so i know i'm waffling and i'm sure i've lost lots of you because i'm waffling but for the people who stay i think there's a lot of value here so about yasin want to develop some more solid friendships with honest loyal altruistic folk love sports the gym philosophy psychology playing music gigs stand-up comedy Meditation, dancing, I'm vegan and cook the best vegan Sunday roast. And then asterisk, reckon group hangouts is the best way to go. I put the last bit because I went on one or two one-to-one -one ones. And, uh, you know, you can only tell so much over the internet. And they were awkward and then I felt like my time was wasted. And this just means that any awkwardness or any person who's a bit awkward or who you you know you won't be friends with long term uh 
they don't mean that your time has been wasted. And you can see I mixed my values, what I value in people, with my interests. Um, you can see I also said I'm vegan. Um, you know, you don't have to be vegan to listen to this. This isn't advice for making vegan friends, but it's something I want. And so I put it there. And so you have to put this stuff out there. And I see some people try almost get it right. And they say, look, if you're fucking this fuck off, swipe left. That's almost right, you know, but it's also really off putting. But the idea of them trying to uh, push certain people away and bring in other certain people is a good idea. And they're saying what they want. They're just saying it in an aggressive, negative way. So if you flip that and you say, here's what I'm looking for and here's what I can offer, uh, then you'll bring in the right people and the people that are like, oh, vegan, fuck off. I want them to feel like that. Uh, not because I'm trying to spread negativity, but because I just, we're not going to work as friends. So it's good. Um, and I used to say this a lot when I was giving out dating advice, like you're not trying to appeal to all women because if you appeal to all women, you appeal to none. All right, so, you know, here's a picture. It's a picture of me drinking. I switched it because I thought I looked pretty good, but I'm not much of a drinker. I don't want to be going out drinking. I don't want drinking to be the, the thing that binds a friendship. Um, in fact, for next year, one of my New Year's resolutions is to only drink on special occasions. And then I'll probably set up some parameters, like has to be maximum once every two months or something it's unlikely I'll have a special occasion more than that um but it's just so bad for you and I don't really gain anything from it at all um so you know we'll change this when I get some new pictures and then it says happy to organize a game of poker sport board game night out hike jam run comedy gig you could say it's too many things but these are all of my interests. I have quite a lot of interests. Maybe someone doesn't like board games. I find people don't like board games. I don't get why. Some people hate poker. I don't get why. But maybe they don't like poker, but they like a hike or basketball or whatever else. Um, we'll get on if you care about the environment, people and the animals around you. You believe there is more to life than earning money, buying fancy things, and glamping. Just continuing to say what I care about and what I value in a friendship. I'm I'm filtering out, actively filtering out. This is good for both parties. Give me two seconds, I need to plug in. And then the other thing I did, which I don't think is on here, but it's an important one for me, is I put location quite tight because my dream in my mind is not to have loads of friends that, you know, one of them lives in Scotland, the other lives in, Co uh, in uh, Coventry and another in Cambridge and then someone down in Devon. Um, that's lovely for when I'm traveling, but for day to day, for hanging out on the weekends, it's not the best, right? And generally you want to have a community of people like your brain doesn't realize on a day-to-day -day that you have a friend in Scotland and so life's going to be okay unless they're around you and you're seeing them frequently your brain is just freaking the fuck out constantly like holy shit I've got no friends I'm gonna die that's what your brain's constantly thinking when you don't have friends so Having them around you, you know, within arm's reach, within a mile, that's what I set my Bumble friends to, is really, really important if you want to actually keep and maintain these friends, because you're going to have to uh, hang out with them a lot in order to maintain the friendship. Um, so yeah, there's that. So some tips for people in terms of messaging. This is probably my strongest um, online friend game bit uh, is messaging people, right? 
Um, I have some messages that I use that are sort of, I don't have to think they're the same. I send them to everyone that always get a good response. And, you know, it's just hacking the system. I found a message that work, worked and I continue to do it so that it's low effort for me. I don't have to go, oh, fuck, what am I going to say to this person to start the conversation? I know what I'm going to do. If we look here at this guy, actually his profile's pretty good, you know, in terms of he says what he wants, um, not interested in MLM, so maybe he's been hit up about that stuff. Uh, I tend to find that stuff less effective and it starts to become a bit negative. I'm not in, you know, you see it when on dating profiles, I'm not interested in some fucking conservative bastard. If you're conservative, swipe right. You know, and then even if you're not conservative, you're like, I'm going to swipe, wait, swipe left is what I meant to say. But even if you're not conservative, you, you'll be like, I'll swipe left. This woman sounds nuts. So you want to try and keep it positive. And instead of saying, I'm not interested in MLM businesses, what else could you say that's positive that filters out the MLL, L, MLM business people? Um, and then also... Who are you swiping right on that are MLM people? It's a hard word, a hard acronym. MLM. Who are you swiping right on? Like, you know, because you'll see, I actually don't have a lot of them. Um, I, I sometimes send pictures of the guys on here to my girlfriend because it's just like topless guys like this, you know, in the bathroom. like, And that's it. No, no profile. Don't say what they like. It's like, what are you doing? What What are you doing? Like, why are you here? Or like, here to make friends, half naked in the bathroom. Are you? Are you really? Like, I think that's one of the problems is people say they want things, but they don't really consider how you go about getting those things or how they're coming across. That's the crux of it. How are you coming across? Because if you're half naked in your bathroom, what what in that makes me want to be your friend? No one knows you like you know you. And you clearly not you're not coming out of your own mind into the and into the minds of others and seeing how am I gonna be perceived with this particular thing. Like you can see what I did with my profile. Is it perfect? No. It's it's been good enough to work and, and make me some like fucking incredible friends but there's still room for improvement. And I can see that because I'm not thinking about what I see. I'm thinking about what someone else will see, given that they don't know all of the details uh, that I fill in. You know, I see my face and then I'm like, yeah, this happened to me in 2016 and 2012 and I like this and I like that. You don't see that when you look at me, unless you know me. Anyway, so I brought up this guy because this is very common. He reaches out first, that's great, you know, being proactive. Hey, you know, I, I can say hey here. Oh, I already said hey. But honestly, for me, the conversation's already ended at this point. Not because, you know, he's probably lovely and all of that, but he's putting the burden of conversation on me. And what's to stop me thinking he'll, he won't do that in person? You know, hey. Hey, now what? How are you? That's always what happens when they do this. Yeah, good, how are you? Yeah, good, how's your week been? Yeah, good, how's your week been? Yeah, a bit busy, you know, crazy. What do you do for work? Yeah, I'm in marketing. What did you do? Ah, did it You know, seven years later, maybe we've met. But what the fuck have I learned about you? I don't know you, so how can I possibly... What can I say to you, you know? I can't tell you how I'm really doing, can I? How are you doing? Yeah, you know, my mum just died of cancer. Uh, I've inherited a dog I don't want. Work's been pretty tough because the... CPC has been higher than I've wanted and, you know, my boss is breathing down my neck. Um, I have herpes. You know, wh what the fuck do they want from from you when they say this? 
Uh, and the answer is they don't even know because they don't understand how conversations work, at least online. I'll admit that in person, I'm actually not the best. Uh, my girlfriend teaches me a lot about this and a lot of my close female friends in particular. Some of the guy friends, but particularly the women tend to be better at like, you know, just springing conversations into existence that are like interesting. Um, but I can struggle with this sometimes like, well, conversations coming to an end. What do I say next? But, you know, you have time to think here. He didn't have to say just, hey, he could go, hmm, okay, this guy's filled in his profile. He's given me a lot of different things to talk about. Well, you know, what's that nut roast? You know, what's that about? Oh, I love basketball. You know, it's just fucking anything. Um, and, but he didn't. And I've had a lot of these and I'll always entertain them because I'm just curious to see if, um, if it ever changes, you know, do they go, hey, and you go, hey, and then they go, boom, like fucking amazing question. It never happens. Um, so I'll just switch it up a bit. Just scrolling through here. I'm probably going to blur this out. Um, but this guy, okay. Really cool, interesting profile. You know, he's been around um, ultra, ultra runathon ultra runner, mountain hiker, tennis player, bookworm, social entrepreneur. I love that bit. I What I try and filter for generally is like someone who is doing good things or desires good people around them. I don't mean like fun people. In fact, one of the things I'm filtering for is not fun. It's okay. I'm, I'm actually okay if you're kind of boring. As long as you can hold a conversation, but you're like, yeah, I'm, you know, I've got simple needs, simple desires. I just cup of tea, you know, wake up early, go to bed early. If you're that kind of person, yeah, I'm game. If you're a, a shit weather friend, you know, if you've got my back and I've got yours, all good. But it's a good profile. Cool pictures, traveled the world. Yeah, it's enough for me. So anyway, I'm going to blur out the first message because this is like my golden message. You, know, you see, haha, I got him again. Uh, in fairness, he asked not the best first question. But then he gives an article of uh, an interview that he did for his ultra marathon running. I mean, he can use this again and again and again. And that's kind of what you want to find. You want to find the stuff that it's like um, the, these structures or these like, uh, what are they called? Crutches that you can lean on for support, you know, and they guide you through the process of a conversation. And what you'll find is the process is almost always the same. It's almost always the same. And men, women, it really doesn't matter. And what I've realized is both men and women are very bad at conversations. I used to think it was women because all I did was go on dating apps and, and message women. But now that I'm talking to dudes, I realize it's universal. People, hey, hey, one, one word answers. They don't ask you questions, all of this stuff. They're out there. And in order to combat that and actually move the conversation along, because... We're not here for pen pals. We're here to meet. So to, to, in order to move the conversation along to a meeting, whilst also learning enough about them to know or get a good idea of whether it's worth meeting them, you've got to have some structures in place. You have to ask certain questions. And you can start to see, your gut will tell you, well, this, this person's responses are a bit naff or a bit short or like, you know, the questions they're asking me are like, weird or you know one thing I get from some people is like you message them they message you you have a busy life and you don't get back to it immediately don't get back to them immediately and then they're like ha, ha, ha like do you hate me or something no no don't ever address it you know 
if you have something else to say, say it. You know, if you come up with some creative thing. But there's so many dudes on here. And, like, cool people. You don't need to chase. Um, you don't need to point out that I didn't respond to you. It looks weak. Um, it just looks weak. So find something creative to say. Uh, you know, recently, someone I know uh, on... Uh, I didn't WhatsApp them back. And then they were like, hey, man, can you please whatsapp me back soon okay because you haven't responded and I, I i need you to respond it was something like that uh, and you know there's reasons why i can't uh if that was a normal person i'd be like what the hell you know but because of who it was i i am more lenient for reasons i can't go into but i was like why what's up are you are you okay and i'd normally just ignore it but yeah, yeah, but you didn't respond. Nah, man, you can't do that. If you want someone to respond and they haven't responded, especially on WhatsApp or something like that, do a voice note. You know, you got to, like, think... You have to think like a marketer. Okay, so in marketing, if the person never opens the emails, stop sending emails. Stop sending emails. Send a text. Get them on Instagram, get them on Facebook, on YouTube, wherever else. You have to know thyself and know the people you're talking to. So if they don't respond to the text, send a voice note. And then you have more personality that you can flex as well, you know. So sing them a song telling them like, Oi, why haven't you responded? But in song form and make it funny. If you can get them to laugh, they'll respond. I learned that street fundraising, it like short circuits people's brains. They're like, oh, I got to do this, got to do that. Yeah, I'll respond to them later. Get them to laugh. They'll respond right then, right there. Ha ha ha, sorry, man. Like, I was busy, but yeah, da 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 da. You got to do more. You've got to try more. And you know, when you first start this stuff and you first start trying, you'll fail. And that's okay. That doesn't mean it's wrong. You've got to think, how can I do it better? Was the voice note actually funny? Maybe ask a friend, would you laugh at this? Sometimes it is genuinely funny or your message genuinely is good and they don't respond or it's a shit answer. Maybe it's them. You don't have to get everything right. You'll, you still won't have a 100% batting average. That's not what you're looking for. You're also looking to meet the people that actually genuinely are keen to meet you too. So you shouldn't be chasing people. Because then maybe you will win them over and you'll hack the system and they'll meet you. But they didn't ever want it to be there. The people that really want to meet you for whatever reason, whether it's dating or friendship, you'll meet. It'll, it'll, it'll be easy. It won't be easy if, you, if you're bad at messaging though. Okay, so we're talking about Bumble. This is just one of many ways that you can meet really, really good people. Um, currently, it's it's my favorite way to get started. It might not be the best way long term, but to get started, for me, it's the best way. Why? Because when you go to a pub or you join a sports club or stuff like that, it's really hard to discern the sorts of people you want to hang out with over the long term versus people that seem nice. You know, most people seem nice when you first meet them, but who are actually, you know, really good people. It's hard to know that. It takes a long time. And so I prefer to, sh you know, skip that step and know, okay, this is what this person's into. Um, I actually met this guy and um, incredible person, you know, he actually could optimize his profile better to express some of that stuff, but he probably didn't want to come across as egotistical. But wow, like incredible. And from this app, I've met multi-millionaires, investors, um, people that have taken startups to, you know, huge heights, uh, professional athletes, all sorts of really cool people, stand-up comedians, 
just awesome people, but not just those things. They're good people, you know, they do work for the, on the environment or they donate a lot or they're vegan or they're all of those things. They're philosophical. They care about more things than drinking. And over time, I've realized these people, they'll be there for you when shit hits the fan. And you can tell this because you start to, when you meet them, you start to have these conversations, you know, here's a situation, here's what happened. And the way they react to how people can be uh, so disloyal or, you know, unempathetic tells you a lot. So if you're just getting started, you don't really have any friends that you're like, yeah, this person, you know, I want them with me by my side until death do us part. If you don't have any like that, this is a great place to start. It's a great place to start also because you can refine it by location and you can do it when you're on the toilet, on the train, right before bed. I wouldn't advise that when you wake up, like anytime you have a moment in, in, in one minute, you can uh, swipe a bunch of ways left and right and have opportunities for lifelong friends. Where else can you do that? Nowhere. It's so cool. Uh, and when I first did it, I was like kind of awkward, like when people were like, hey, where did you meet? I'd be like, oh yeah, on, on Bumble. It's kind of like how uh, dating, online dating was 20 years ago. I remember when my aunt, when I was like nine, 10, she told us she was online dating. The whole village in Ireland was like, oh, <laughs> what a fucking, you know, quite cruel stuff. But um. It wasn't the done thing. But now online dating, it's like, you know, everyone does it. But making friends, it's still in that phase of like, <clears throat> whatever, it'll change. I guarantee you, everyone will be on Bumble Friends. Like 80% of people. <sighs> and the reason for that is most people, when asked the question in a in a situation of need, in a dire situation, how many people could you call on to help you out? And like in the 70s or whatever, it was like six people. And you'd think like six people sounds like not a lot, right? Now it's zero. Zero. The average person has zero real friends. So yeah, you can go to the pub all you want. You can go and play, you know, tag rugby all you want. That genuinely you can, and you can make really good friends there. But just remember that you're here to make real friends. And as soon as you realize someone won't be a real friend, don't be an ass to them. Like, you know, maybe it's a mutual thing. They can't give you what you want. You can't give them what they want. Fine. That's fine. But don't overinvest. If you have mutual friends, fair enough. But don't like go and hang out with them just so you don't feel lonely on a Sunday. One thing to note is when I first started this and I started being like, okay, I really need to sort this friend thing out. Oh, it was so lonely. Because I was finally scratching that scab, you know. I was very aware, acutely aware of how uh, vulnerable I was. It's so important to have that social network. And when you start focusing on it, you know, 100% of your, of your attention on that piece, it, you, it becomes abundantly clear how lacking you really are. And so you just have to go through that. And when I first started it, I thought, yeah, it'll be a, you know, a month and I'll have ama all these amazing friends. Uh, and maybe you could do that, but I tend to just meet people on the weekend. I, I like my weekends. My week's fairly clear. I work a lot, so... Um, maybe you could do it really quick, but, uh, I can't. And so it took maybe more like six months. And also you're not going to get anything other than a fair weather friend after, uh, one or two meetings. Um, but yeah, so that's why it's so important to, uh, prioritize this stuff.
So you have Bumble. What you need to do to, to uh, condense it or summarize is optimize your profile, continue to work on it. Both the pictures, like you, you need to look like you got your shit together, like you're an interesting, happy person uh, with hobbies and all of that. And then the descriptions, man. If you want good people, you need to put in detailed descriptions. And there's people on there that, oh, haha, like, fuck the description. Like, they'll literally say something like that. Like, let's just fucking go for drinks. You're not going to have good friends doing that. You're just not. So, there's that bit. But I wouldn't use Bumble alone. I've tried Meetup, and depending on what you are looking for, uh, like what type of hobby, you'll probably be able to find like-minded people and make friends that way. For me, it's not been the best because you have to take the good with the bad. And, you know, you might get... There, there's some unusual people, let's put it that way, on on uh, Meetup. And you might get stuck talking to someone you don't want to be talking to on a Saturday morning on a hike or something. Um, so you can do it and you know, certain types of hobbies are more likely to, you just have to, depending on what you want from life and what you want from these people, you have to think about what sort of hobbies you put first. For instance, I love basketball and I've met quite a few people from basketball um, that are nice people, um, but they're not my core people. And it's a lot harder to find, you know, to find like a vegan who cares about the environment, who, you know, that kind of stuff when you're playing basketball. It just is. So when I'm thinking about uh, what I lead with, it's like board games, poker. And the poker piece is because uh, people who are business inclined tend to love poker. And so I've met a lot of really cool entrepreneurs and that kind of thing. Um, So just be considerate, like... Maybe you do like going to the pub, but that's probably not what you want to use as a way to to meet like-minded people because it's kind of like saying, I like food, or I like water, or I like breathing. Yeah, so does everyone else. You still might become friends with Hitler, you know, so consider that. So you have your online strategy. And what you want to do is you want to use that in tandem with an offline strategy. And if you have literally zero good friends, then the best way to do this is to become a hub. So you start talking to people on Bumble and then maybe you organize a board game night or a poker night. I'm doing both of these and they've been very fruitful. Um, Or uh, you start a runner's club or a book club or whatever kind of club. You need to be the hub. So you start that and then you message a bunch of people on here who seem to be interested in that thing. And then you say, yeah, we're all going to meet on Saturday at 10 a.m. Boom. Now you you have four or five people that are coming to meet you. Um, And then from there, what you need to do is ask, encourage them to bring friends and like remind them, you know, every time you meet, like if you want to ever bring a friend, like, more than welcome to bring them to the book club or whatever else. And then people actually do start to invite other people. And those people then become part of the network and they invite people. And it just, that's why it's, it's a bit painful at the start is because, you know, things compound at a slow, it's like investing. Things compound at a slower rate when you have a hundred pounds than when you have a hundred thousand or a million pounds. They just do. And the differences are so negligible, you don't even realize they're happening. Just like at the gym as well. Like, uh, You're not going to see no six-pack one day and then the following day see a six-pack. It takes time. So, um, yeah, these things start to really snowball, though, later on. So that's why I say give it six months of, like, your heart, your effort, uh, your focus, and you will start to see, like, oh, wow, I'm really starting to become the hub and all these people around me and 
um and then you can start to cross the groups over like so you're playing poker do you also like board games or book clubs or whatever yeah yeah and then now the different groups are um are being cross you're diversifying across your groups and broadening your friendship group um for me i really like group stuff because um it's a more efficient way to meet people makes it sound all this stuff makes me sound like a robot but it really is i i'm as i've got older i realized i don't want to go from from uh east london to southwest london and then you know to meet one person and then to go up to northwest london and then down to southeast london and then you know it's so exhausting for for me i used to have a lot of energy with stuff like that i don't anymore i just want people around and if i can meet seven great people at once awesome and then maybe i'll go for a coffee locally with one you know one to one or uh you know three of us or something like that uh where you can be a bit more intimate and and get a bit more into the weeds uh and you know know how people are doing and then i also use whatsapp uh, um to check up on people so become the hub and it allows you to be efficient so now you can meet 10 people in a two-hour period that you all like um rather than it taking you a week and a half of meeting one person every single day and traveling for you know 14 hours or whatever um now it just takes you no time to travel because it's in your house or it's local and you've met all the cool people and i think for most people uh that's probably enough like one or two of those things per week and then a coffee or something like that it's probably enough for most people um maybe you need more but i I've, i've seen that for most people when they have really good people around and um, they really connect with people. That's the more important bit. And the reason people like the reason I used to socialize so much was because I think subconsciously I knew, man, these people. If I'm ever homeless, if I'm ever bankrupt, if I'm ever divorced, whatever, they're just gonna abandon me. So I gotta keep making friends. So you know, you're trying to meet all these different people all over the uh, the city. And it's exhausting. And when you actually feel like, yeah, these people have my back, I think you can chill a bit more and be more comfortable uh, on your own, knowing, yeah, they're just around the corner. Um, And yeah, it all just gets a lot easier, a lot less investment when you just walk five minutes down the road and your friend's there, rather than having to trounce around the place. and you know if you're in in the countryside or a small village or a tiny city uh all this stuff becomes exponentially harder yet uh it's easier to make to become part of a community in smaller places uh but if you have specific needs it becomes harder so for for instance if you just want a community of good people you can find that in the countryside. I could go back to Cork Island and I could find that in a heartbeat. Um, but would they be vegan? No. Would they care about the environment? Probably not. Would they even know about that stuff? No. Um, so for me, given my specific needs, that doesn't work. I have to be in a big city. And so given how critically important this is to your health and your longevity, If you're not getting that itch scratched where you are and you know that it will be really hard to get it scratched, you probably need to move. And maybe that sounds flippant, but it's not. Uh, Whether or not I stay in London has been something that I've considered a lot. And it's not always easy picking where you live, but it's an an important consideration and one that should actually be had. and then if you do decide to stay where you stay, where you are, uh, 
know the sacrifices that you made and be okay with those. Anyway, so you've got the online piece. We've d discussed that. You have the offline piece and you're connecting people. And especially when you meet someone who you think, ah, that other person that I know, they'll love them. Coffee date right there. Now you've become someone who is a connector. People love that. Um, another thing that helps me make friends and that a lot of people don't do is something that I had from before, um, before I was homeless. Um, and under these, under the new framework, um, is highly effective. And that's that I don't mind asking for a number. I don't mind looking like an umpty or like desperate or weak. Um, these are the thoughts that people have when, you know, they meet someone at a coffee shop or at the gym or whatever else and you hit it off and you're like, man, that person's great. Most people go, ah, you know, maybe I'll see them again or I can't ask for their number. They'll think I'm gay and I'm hitting on them. Um, yeah, you just got to do it. You just got to do it. I just do it. And if they think I'm gay or they think I'm weird or like desperate yeah it's okay i i think like if that's what you think that's on you uh unless i've said nice dick man what's your number uh you know if i've been clear about my intentions and they just assume all this shit that hasn't happened i think they're weird man we hit it off we have a great chat and you think i'm weird for wanting to hang out hang out again man, that's your shit. That's not mine. That's an important piece. I I won't talk about it too much here, but realizing what is your shit and what's someone else's shit. It's an important lesson. And so having that like quick trigger, you know, that person seems cool. Boom, get their number. Connect with them. Another part of making friends that I'm not the best at, but I've really made an effort with is messaging you know this like hey how you been especially if you know they've gone away on to another country or you have or uh they're busy with work or you're busy with work or for whatever reason stars don't align and uh you're not able to meet for a while you need to be proactive about reaching out and letting them know hey i still care about you I'm still thinking about you. Um, when I was younger, I used to put this on other people. I used to put it on other people. I, You know, it was tit for tat. I'd say it once. Then if they didn't say it, fuck them. I'm done. I was very proud. I got this from my father. And it doesn't help you. You need to be like an endless reservoir of giving. Maybe not endless. But go a few times because you don't know what's happening in their life. And you can always have a crucial conversation in person. It's a book I'm reading. It's amazing. Hey, man, I've messaged you four times in a row asking you how you are. And obviously, if you're messaging them like four times in a day asking how they are or four times in a week, it's a bit excessive and people are going to get put off. But let's say it's four times in six months. You never, you know, check in on me. Is that because you don't care? Is it because you're like busy? Is it because you're bad with your phone? Like, what's the deal? And, you know, whatever it is, I'm cool with it. But I just, just trying to understand, like, is this something I should continue to pursue? Or should I, you know, leave it die? Because if you don't want to be friends anymore or whatever, that's cool too, you know. Um, but I think if we're frank with each other, we'll probably save time and and have a more effective friendship. And they'll tell you what it is, you know. Um, and I actually had a conversation like that recently with someone, um, and it went really, really well. Um, uh, it wasn't quite that. It was more that, uh, someone basically ghosted me, um, for years. And I'd be like, dude, what's going on? Just like, if I've fucked up or something, let, let me know. No response. Then years later, they responded and actually, this is the endless reservoir thing, you know. I just reached out again. Hey, how you been? 
uh, I'd had a great conversation with someone and I was like, actually, that's not my thing. If they can't communicate why they no longer want to talk, that's not my thing. I can't put that on me. Until they they come to me and they say, this is the reason why. I make no assumptions. I want to be your friend. I'm going to pursue it. And we had a, a, a really long conversation. I told him, you know, I was hurt by this. Uh, I didn't understand it. Like he could have just let me know he didn't want to be friends. And then, you know, he told me everything. And it was, it wasn't about me. You know, is what I realized. He was going through a lot of shit and he was struggling and everyone in his life apparently his family were worried about him because he no longer responded to them just a wall ghosted everyone um and he said that like when he'd see my name pop up it would like you know it was it was a nice thing even though he wasn't going to respond for him it was supportive so if you have the um the capacity for it depends on where you are if you have the capacity for it just continue on if it, if it doesn't sap you of energy keep going um but yeah reach out to people try and understand try and remember when their birthdays are when their important days are like if they say yeah my partner's going into chemo next week now nah, you don't just go oh no 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 you got to write that down as soon as you two have left or even like let me just write that down so i can remember and then you ask them how their partner's doing if you want shit weather friends if you want people who will be there for you you have to be there for them and that requires effort and honestly sometimes you don't want to put in that effort it's hard you're you're feeling lazy if you're like me you're you're not always um organized i'm very disorganized and so that stuff's like you know i'll do it later and i never do it later so you really have to go above and beyond and when you start putting in effort uh people start putting in effort with you you can't expect people to good to do good things for you to sacrifice for you when you do none of that for them and honestly that's what i was like I was a lot of like, ah, oh, man, I'd be there for you. I'd be there for you. Uh, but I didn't show that. Um, and basically what you're trying to do is find the right people who seem as though they'll stick around through thick and thin and then invest in those relationships as much as you possibly can. Um from the goodness of your heart but knowing that one day you may be able to cash in that check that when shit hits the fan for you they'll be there and not because you just deserve it because you're a human and you're you but because every time they needed help you were there for them you know when they needed to move house because they broke up with their partner you didn't go oh that's shit man you went, do you need a hand? I can come over now. I'm ha- I, you know, I've got driver's license. I'll, I'll pick you up. We can make a day of it. We'll get pizza. We'll listen to good tunes. I'll help you move. On a Saturday morning, maybe you, you didn't want to get out of bed. Maybe you had basketball plans. That's how you go above and beyond. And then good people, and most people in these situations will reciprocate. Um, and yeah, do it from the goodness of your heart. Don't be like, yeah, I've got some, a shit week coming up next week. So let me, um, invest in my friends so I can cash it in next week. It yeah, when, once you start doing this, it actually feels really good to help people. But it also means that when you need help, they'll be there for you. If you find Bumble doesn't work for you. I would suggest you put something in the comments below and tell me why. Give me some rundown of the things you say um, because I'm really good at this stuff. Um, I always have been and it's from when I did online dating. Um, Yeah, I just head and shoulders above the rest. 
So if you need help, I'm here for you. Um, but if it still doesn't work for whatever reason, you know, maybe you don't have access to a good camera. You, uh, you know, you're very low on money. Maybe you're homeless like I used to be. And, uh, yeah, you just can't take good pictures and, uh, your English isn't the best or something like that. Then go on meetup, go to running clubs, go to all of these different things, join sports clubs, um, go where the people that you want to be around are and then put yourself out there. I think that's the main thing. If you do that, I feel like you'll make a lot of friends and it will really transform your life. It's transformed mine. I used to enjoy my work and yet I'd get up every day and I, if someone asked me how I was, I'd be like, yeah, I'm fine. That was the best you'd get out of me. Now, every day I'm great at a minimum. And it's because like, yeah, like, you know, it might be stressful at work or whatever else, but fuck man, I've got amazing people around me. And every time I meet one of them, they're so smart and good, you know, good in a way where you're not like, yeah, we're on a level where you're like, fuck. Why didn't I think about the negative ramifications of Amazon? Why did I push that down and pretend it wasn't there? And they uh, highlight these things for you. And now you're a better person. And they're the kinds of people you want to meet. People that level you up and you level them up. And you're teaching each other things about life. Um, and yeah, so all that stuff is right around the corner for you if you put in the effort. You may also have to adjust how you come across in person. How do you dress? How do you sound? How well read are you? Um, how interesting are you? Are you funny? One of my strengths that never comes across in this channel. Um, but one of my strengths is I'm extremely funny and I can make almost anyone laugh. And I think, you know, whether I know it or not, that benefits me when it comes to making friends. Because people want to feel good. They want to be around people that make them feel good. I'm also... I have a lot of knowledge around psychology, philosophy. I'm a thinker. And so when I'm around people that think, you'd be surprised lots of people don't. But when I'm around people that do, um, I think they really enjoy it. And so that's another piece I'll add on, which is find people that like whatever your strengths are you know so if you're some like super fucking loud like alpha ma alpha male and like you're going to like feminist clubs or whatever and um this is not me saying feminism's bad or anything like that so don't come after me all i'm saying is maybe you're in a place that doesn't really want that um and you find it hard to to meet people because you actually do believe in feminism and all of that stuff um but you're like super loud and alpha and aggressive and you know maybe you should go meet people somewhere else where your traits are desirable and then the other bit is if you just have a lot of undesirable traits maybe you need to work on yourself you know uh i think our strengths and our weaknesses we all have strengths and weaknesses and a lot of our weaknesses we actually can't get rid of. Like, uh, or it's a waste of time. Like, I'm very disorganized. Um, 10 hours put into trying to become less disorganized uh, gives me like, you know, a 0.1% improvement. But if I work on one of my strengths, like if I put 10 hours into becoming funnier, because it's just natural to me, that uh, improvement is exponential rather than linear. And so it's usually better to spend time honing your strengths. But if you have some glaring weakness, like you stink, um, or you sound really weird, or uh, you're meek, if you're something like that, you probably need to uh, spend time working on it. And, um, 
you know, if you don't know what your weaknesses are and you find that you can meet people and then they ghost you or whatever, you need to ask them, call them up. I've done this before when I was dating and I was like, well, I wonder why that didn't go well. I, Hello. Hey. They'd always be confused. Like, why the fuck's this man calling me? I clearly had no interest. Yeah, I'm not trying to hit on you or anything. Like, I get you weren't interested, but how come? What did, what, at what point were you like, nah? Sometimes it's just it just didn't match. And you'll actually uh, start to realize as you become more discerning that... Uh, it didn't match because you were on a different level. So when you really are fussy and you should be fussy with this for for your sake and for their sake, when you become really fussy, there'll never be a situation where you like them and they didn't like you. So I, I can't think of an example, even with dating, because so much of it is like, you know, connection and uh, that je ne sais quoi, like, when when it's there it's there for both people and so if you're thinking it's there when it's not it's because you're not fussy enough and you're just like oh this person um it has a heartbeat it's they're so great um but they're more fussy than you and so they see it and uh and then you're confused but by asking them this and then you know trying to see when it really was just a we're not right for each other thing. And when it was literally you, like, man, you stank. You you smell nasty, man. Damn. Put stuff in the comments below because it'll help, um, help me grow and help other people see this. And this is probably the most important thing. I haven't seen anyone break down how to make friends like this. Um, so if you found this valuable, please comment below, share it with your friends once you get some, and uh, subscribe. And peace!